if you remember, I told you that genetic engineering can be done in two ways. It could be done using recombinant DNA technology. We've covered that in the previous videos. And now we are going to be talking about the second way in which genetic engineering can be done, and that is known as gene editing. All right, gene editing basically means that you are changing the organism's DNA base sequence by either deleting, inserting, or replacing sections of the DNA. If you do not understand that statement, let's just use an example. Now, I have a gene here, and this gene has two particular alleles, which are the dominant allele large B and the recessive allele small b. For the dominant allele large B, this is just an example, please do not memorize this. The dominant allele has a base sequence of ACCTA and also TGGAT, whereas the recessive allele, however, has a base sequence of ACTTA, TGAAT, as you can see there. So the base sequences between the dominant and recessive alleles are quite similar with the exception of the highlighted region, the GC and also the AT. Another thing I just want to add again, this is just an example. I'm just going to say that the dominant allele causes a particular genetic disease, whereas the recessive allele in this case is not causing a disease. Some students will be quite surprised to know that dominant alleles can also cause diseases because the common assumption is that recessive alleles only cause diseases. But if you remember when we studied chapter 16, Huntington disease, that particular genetic disease was caused by a dominant allele. Now, Let's imagine this person over here who has a genotype of large b, small b. Therefore, it means that this person has that genetic disease because they have the dominant allele present in their genotype. So, what we can do with gene editing is we can try to edit their alleles, especially the problematic one, the large b allele. As an example, what we can do is we can cut the large b allele and once you cut the large B allele, you have separated the sequence and thus the large B allele is silenced. What does it mean by silenced here? It means that this allele can no longer cause the genetic disease in the person. So that's one way that we can edit the alleles to reduce this genetic problem. Another thing that we can also do probably in gene editing is you cut out the GC base sequence over there by removing the phosphodiester bonds. And what you do is we can also add or insert the new correct nucleotides, which are the AT nucleotides. Because that AT nucleotide, when it's inserted, notice it's the same as the allele small b which causes no disease so the large b allele is converted to become the small b allele so that is called repairing the sequence using gene editing now you might be thinking wow this is quite an amazing thing the technology sounds like it's in the future here's the interesting thing we actually have this technology currently it's not perfect but it's almost getting that so, gene editing involves cutting the DNA at very specific sequences. For example, if I have this base sequence over here, I may want to cut the sequence at that highlighted regions. I need to cut that particular area. Now, you might be thinking, oh, this is very simple. If we want to cut the DNA by severing the phosphodiester bonds, we can use the restriction enzymes. However, if you remember, when we talked about restriction enzymes a while ago, for example, the ECO R1 restriction endonuclease and the HIN3 restriction endonuclease, they cut DNA at very specific sequences. So, if you ask any of these restriction endonuclease, not ask them, but if you, if you put the enzymes uh, to that base sequence and you want those enzymes to cut that particular base sequence, the restriction endonucleases are not able to do it because remember they are very specific to which DNA sequences they can cut. So if you want to cut the DNA in a very specific region, relying on restriction endonucleases is useless. 
So the proper definition of gene editing here is changing the organism's DNA base sequences by deleting, inserting or replacing sections of the DNA using a new technology known as the CRISPR-Cas9 system. Whenever I see the word CRISPR, all I can think of is potato chips. I have no idea why it just comes to my mind. Anyway, the CRISPR-Cas9 system, I know a lot of students usually have problems with the CRISPR-Cas9 system because the textbook is a little bit confusing on this. So I'll try to keep it as simple as possible. Now, what you have to know about the CRISPR-Cas9 system is the fact that this particular technology is made out of two components, the Cas9 enzyme and also something known as the guide RNA, gRNA, by the way. Okay, so let's talk about it. The Cas9 enzyme, I'm going to represent the shape of the enzyme as a rectangle and those two triangles are the active sites. Yes, this enzyme has two active sites and the function of the active site of the Cas9 enzyme is to cut the DNA and it will cut the DNA by severing the phosphodiester bonds, the covalent bonds, by the way at the sugar phosphate backbone. Now, a guide RNA is an RNA that can be synthesized in the lab, which means to say it is an artificial molecule. And the reason why it's called the guide RNA is because this gRNA will guide the Cas9 enzyme on where to cut the DNA. The Cas9 enzyme will not just cut the DNA whenever and wherever it wants to. It needs to know where to cut the DNA. And the gRNA is the one that guides the Cas9 enzyme. As an example here, let's say we have a DNA base sequence. Please do not memorize the sequence here. And for example, I want to cut the DNA at that specific region, which I've highlighted in pink, maroon, I, yeah, that color, okay? So I've, I've just, I, I want to cut the DNA there. Now, the condition in using CRISPR-Cas9 system is you need to know the base sequence because if I want to cut the DNA at that particular area, I first need to artificially synthesize the gRNA. And just like in recombinant DNA technology, I told you that we can artificially synthesize genes using a DNA synthesizer. We also have the technology to synthesize RNAs. Now, look at the sequence of the DNA that I've highlighted. T, G, C, T, C, T. What I have to do is I have to synthesize a gRNA and the gRNA has to have a sequence which is complementary to that highlighted DNA sequence. So the if the DNA base sequence is TGCTCT, the gRNA sequence has to be ACG, AG, A. A, C, G, A, G, A, which is complementary to the DNA. Now, you might be thinking, what about those other sequences which I'm circling right there? We don't have to care about that, okay? We just have to know that the gRNA needs to be complementary to the DNA sequence that you want to cut. So, how does it work then? How does CRISPR-Cas9 work here? Well, what happens is, we have the Cas9 enzyme and we also couple it together with the gRNA. So you can see the gRNA, which is that, which is like that squiggly centipede looking thing. Now, and that's the chromosome. And that chromosome, so what we do is that chromosome has a DNA sequence that we want to cut. So what happens is the Cas9 enzyme and the gRNA will start to move along the chromosome and unwind sections of it until it reaches the complementary area. The complementary area is that part where as you can see here, the ACGACA on the gRNA has now complementarily, complementarily, has now formed complementary base pairing with the DNA base sequence TGC, TCT. It doesn't have to form complementary base sequence on both the strands. As long as it just forms a complementary base sequence base pairing on one of the uh, DNA strands, you are good. Now, at that particular section, once the gRNA locks on to the DNA base sequence, because it was the aim, that's when, as you can see here, we are zooming in, the active site of the Cas9 enzyme will then 
cut the phosphodiester bonds at that particular region, which I'm putting as a single line right there, and thus the DNA has been cut at that particular sequence. You couldn't use the restriction enzyme to do it, but you can use the Cas9 enzyme to cut both DNA strands. And now the strand has been separated. So long story short, we introduce the Cas9 and gRNA. The gRNA will bind to the target sequence through complementary base pairing, and the Cas9 will cut the DNA strands at a specific region. And like once we've cut the DNA in a specific region, what do we do? Remember, we can just basically keep it severed or cut to silence the allele, or we can try to insert the correct nucleotides so that the diseased allele can be repaired and it can form the non-diseased allele. Now, you don't have to know how a new nucleotide is inserted. That's also another part of a different technology, but you just have to understand gene editing using the CRISPR-Cas9. So for the purpose of the exam, this is good enough, by the way, the just knowing how the gRNA and the Cas9 enzyme works and what are some of the application of the method. Further applications of gene editing will be talked about when I'm talking about the application of genetic technology in medicine.